Here's a question I get asked all the time. It doesn't matter what's a Ford, Chevy, or Dodge, or an import. Do big ports hurt low speed power? Let's find out. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the effect of port volume on power production. We're gonna concentrate specifically at the low speed power, but we're actually gonna show you what happens for the entire power curve, because let's face it, if you're gonna put a bigger port volume head that flows more, you're also gonna want more peak power. So to run this test, we actually compared different cylinder heads on three different combinations. We started out with a five liter forward, actually it's a 306, and it was carbureted, but it was a much milder application. So we ran three different heads on the 306. Then we did the same thing on a Stroker 363 small block Ford, and we finished things up by comparing two different cylinder heads on a 372 inch small block Chevy. So let's find out if port volume actually reduces low speed power. To demonstrate the effect of port volume on low speed torque production, actually on torque production through the whole RPM range, we ran different size cylinder heads with different port volumes on three different motors. Now we wanted to show you what happened on the different displacements because maybe it has effect on the smaller displacement and less on the bigger displacement, but we're going to check that out. So we started off with a 302 5 liter Ford. Actually, this one was 306 inches and it was modified in typical fashion. It had heads, cam, and intake manifold on that. In this, in this case, we had our Extreme Energy 274 cam that we usually run on small block Ford applications. This was a hydraulic roller deal. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here, but by now, hopefully you guys should have them memorized. <laughs> it's a mild cam, works very well, works good for, for a 5 liter deal. This combination also had as cast Dart Pro 190cc intake port heads on it. It had a dual plane intake, a 750 Holley, and inch and three quarter long tube hooker super comp headers. Kind of a typical combination for a mildly modified 302 or 306 and equipped in this manner with 190cc ASCAS dart heads. Our combination produced 390 horsepower and 373 foot-pounds of torque. So it did well, you can see the entire curve. We are down below 300 foot-pounds, down here at 2500 RPM. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed our bigger 210 cc fully CNC ported Dart Pro 1 heads. Here, here are the 210 heads. So as you can see, bigger port volume did make more power. We were all the way up to almost three or almost 400 horsepower but we only had gains past 5700 rpm we lost torque in the middle it made almost 400 horsepower torque was down to 370 foot pounds so not down from a peak to peak standpoint very much but if you look the bigger head was down in torque production from 3800 to 5500 but even down low below that point down below 3500 rpm the bigger head actually made a little bit more torque. So a lot of guys think that a, you know, a small head, you know, <laughs> extra acceleration for the airflow, better cylinder filling, it makes lots more torque. That's actually not what happens, at, 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 certainly not at wide open throttle. But here's the question for you, and I want you guys to answer and let me know in the comments. What do you guys think about part throttle? Because in my opinion, when we go to a bigger head, even if we don't see a drop in low speed power at wide open throttle, I think we might see that at part throttle. I think that the bigger head might be less responsive at part throttle, and we're not seeing as a big a change at wide open throttle. The one thing I can say is, in this combination on a sub 400 horsepower 302 or 306, the 210 cc intake port and with the flow rate offered by the Dart Pro One, it's enough to support 600 horsepower. So we have a 600 horsepower head on a motor that's only making 400 horsepower. So really it's way more cylinder head that it needs, regardless of what's happening to our low speed torque. But as we saw, it's not hurting that. But here's our final combination. We all we remove the 210 head and put a set of Dart 225 heads on. Again, CNC ported. They flow a little more than the 210, enough to support over 600 horsepower. But we saw the same thing. It had a drop in power in the mid-range, made more power at the top as expected, but also made more power down low, at least, you know, even from 2,800 all the way up to 36 or 3,700 RPM. So the theory that smaller port volume improves low speed torque production, at least wide on the throttle, doesn't play out on this combination. But let's find out how it did on a larger 363 inch Ford and then on a 372 inch Chevy. Test motor number two on the Ford side was a larger 363 inch stroker and it was a Dart SHP short block. So it came complete as a single short block. 
it combined the 3.4 inch stroke, which is really common on 347 stroke recombinations, and a larger 4125 bore because this was a dart block, so it had the bigger bore. So the bigger bore and stroke combination produced 363 inches, and the big bore also allowed this thing, I think, to better take advantage of some of these larger cylinder hits. So this combination also had a much bigger camshaft and a single plane intake. It had a uh, solid roller from Cam Research. It was 725 lift, 254 to 60 degree duration, and I think it was 109 degree lobe separation angle. This particular combination had, uh, we started off with a funnel web intake and a 950 Holly, and we began the test with a set of Dart Pro 1 170 cc as cast cylinder heads. So equipped with the 170 cc as cast cylinder heads, our 363 inch stroker produced 510 horsepower. And peak torque checked in at 472 foot-pounds. You can see the entire curve here with the small 170cc ASCAST head. But here's what happened when we installed the larger 195 heads. The combination made more power. The 195 heads flow better than the 170 heads. And the bigger motor was actually able to take advantage of that, equipped with the 195 heads. This thing produced 528 horsepower. Peak torque was also up, 483 foot-pounds. And as we can see down here, and even down to 27 or 2800 RPM, there's very little change between the 170. We might have had a little bit more uh, from the 170. That's about two or three foot-pounds of torque down there. Um, I'm not certain that that's a function of the cylinder head or maybe a run to run variation, but we didn't see any big change, any significant change going from the 170 to the 195, at least in low speed torque. We did see a big gain in power as we would expect from, you know, the motor, this motor combination could take advantage of the extra airflow offered by the bigger head. Now here's what happened when we installed the 210 cc, you know, the full CNC Dart Pro 1 head. Again, more power because, you know, unlike the 306, this combination was able to take advantage of what that head had to offer. So the bigger head, obviously, it made more power. It made 566 horsepower. Peak torque was about the same at 483 or 4 foot-pounds of torque. It happened a little bit later, but you can see there was a drop in power. From, and we saw a similar drop in the mid-range, remember, on the 306 combination. There was a drop in torque um, between the, the, the lowest one, the 210 head, had the lowest torque down here in this area between, let's say, 4,046 or 4,700 RPM, even all the way out to 5,000 compared to the 195 head. And it made a little bit less um, low speed power than the, or the, the 210 head actually, <laughs> I take that back. The 210 head actually had the best low speed power. And we saw that on the 306 also, that it didn't lose any power down low. It actually had the best low speed power. It had better low speed power than the 170 or the 195. So again, <laughs> does the smaller head with the accelerating the port velocity, does it actually produce low speed power? We're certainly not seeing that at wide open throttle, but what do you guys think about part throttle? Now let's check out and see if it works out like that on a Chevy. Our final comparison was on the largest of the three test motors. This one was 372 inches. It was also a Dart SHP short block, but this one was a Chevrolet. So this combined, I'll take a look at our test description. It was a 4125 bore and a 348 stroke. So it was a big bore, but a standard 350 stroke crank. This thing had a pretty good size camshaft. It was a hydraulic roller, 558, 558, 242, 250 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle. It had inch and three quarter dyno headers. This thing was running a Holly strip dominator and a 950 ultra XP carburetor. And we first equipped it with a set of 180 Dart, again, Pro One as cast heads for this for the small block Chevy run in this configuration i think that this thing was about 10 and a half to one run in this configuration with the 180 heads this combination produced 510 horsepower and 479 foot pounds of torque so it did very well especially with a 180 as cast head it just shows that 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 head if you have it on a good combination can make lots of power but here's what happened when we put a cnc head on this one was a 210 dart again a dart pro one and it did indeed make more power. It made 520 horsepower. 
Peak torque was actually down slightly to 477 foot-pounds. And as you can see on this combination, uh, oddly enough, our CNC head, which we thought would make quite a bit more power, um, didn't increase the peak power dramatically. It made more power from about 55 or 55.50 on up and made less power, again, <laughs> kind of in the middle portion of the curve, although all the way down to about 3,300, but not by a lot. We're talking at the most here, it was six or seven foot-pounds and in some places just two or three but on the load in and at the beginning part of the curve the bigger head actually made a little bit more <laughs> a little bit more torque so there you have it if you want lots of low speed torque you need to put a big cylinder head on there <laughs> as shown by this but again i think it's important to note that this full uh full throttle dyno runs at wide open throttle tell you nothing about the the drivability and the part throttle stuff so let me know what you guys think about that if you're trying to make lots of peak power, obviously a ported head works very well. But I think that the takeaway here is that also you're not going to kill the low speed power by putting a bigger head on. And the thing that I like about putting a good cylinder head on there is it makes it a lot easier to make a given power output with a with a milder with milder cam timing. Because the more head flow you have, and this is something that the LS guys obviously found out long ago, but if you have a good set of like LS3 heads on there, you can make any power level with a much milder cam timing so the thing drives around better. But the thing you don't have to worry about is you're not going to kill all the low speed power by putting a bigger head on your small block Chevy or small block Ford. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, let's see a show of hands. How many people were actually surprised by the results of this test? How many guys were actually certain that increasing the port volume would definitely decrease low speed power? I mean, there is a certain level of internet logic associated with that, but let's think about this for a minute. If we increase the port volume, but also increase airflow, especially the low and mid lift stuff, there's a big chance it will increase the power, not decrease it. And that's actually exactly what happened on our small block Fords. When we put the bigger heads on, we increased peak power, which we expected, but we also increased low speed power. So the port volume all by itself doesn't have a big effect because there are a lot of other things that are going to affect power production in that range. It's hard to change the power way down low with cam timing. It's hard to change the power way down low, even with intake manifold, unless you have really, really long runners. But the two things that are definitely going to change power output down low and basically everywhere, one is compression. Compression will affect power output basically through the whole curve. But the other big thing that's definitely going to affect power down low, that's displacement. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Make sure to comment. I'll keep testing.